welcome back to another episode. Today's episode is going to be kind of sweet. All right, one of the things that kind of plagues these Fox bodies is the original ECU will start to run a little bit funky on you. A lot of times that is due to the capacitors either being completely shot or leaking or whatever. And today's episode, we're going to be upgrading the original capacitors in this A9L. And that is actually the original ECU that came in the 8.9. I don't know what in the world happened, but it's kind of bent up. The case on it is, and whatever. I don't know that I've ever been in this one before. It was not running weird. It was not, uh, you know, it's got an A9P in it right now. And it was not running weird when I took this out. The A9P's been in there for a good, I don't know, two years maybe. I want to go back to the A9L because although the A9P does run a little bit better as far as uh, when the timing curve kicks in, I want to go back to the A9L because when you push in the clutch it holds the idle a little bit higher than I want it to. But today we're going to go ahead and insert the most common three capacitors to go bad in these things. These are an upgrade over the factory. I have four of these, and this is the kit here. In my opinion, there are two number one capacitor manufacturers right now, and uh, that is Panasonic and Nichicon, or however you say that. These are gonna go in there, and we just gotta match them with the correct uh, value. These here being 47 microfarad, and this one here I think it was a 10. Yes, this is a 10. Let's just go ahead and start digging in. I, th I want to say this is a T15. Right here. Take these two out also. All right, those are a T8. All right, now we need to take out these. There's two up there, and I kind of think that those need to come out as well, but I can't recall. It's been a few minutes since I tore one of these apart. Oh, there's one dead st dead center also. too sure if I got all the way into mentioning this because uh, someone came out the door but it's this one this one and this one we are replacing with these three that's the blue ones they are the most commonly bad units on here these here are also capacitors um, but some people call these chiclet capacitors these don't go out like these normal caps do. So what we're gonna do 
is identify what goes where. All right, that one's a 47. 47. So that, by process of elimination, will make this one a 10, I'm sure. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. So now we just need to identify on the backside what's what. I'm using solder wick to desolder, as you can see, solder remover. And this is actually some old uh, Radio Shack stuff. I really, 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 really like this. And I'm a little bit sad that Radio Shack's not around anymore because that's my favorite solder. I will actually preface this by saying I do know that this is not the correct soldering tip for this. However, Home Depot doesn't have any in stock. Neither does Harbor Freight. So, we're rolling with this. Anyway, it's those two there. We're gonna start out there. You must, by the way, note which side the black is on, which is the negative side of the capacitor. Hopefully you can see that. It says negative in there, I think. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and replace them. And we're gonna use the 47, because that's what it is. And on these new ones, this is the negative here in the white. So that's what that means. So anyway, put this right here. And we'll get started on the other side. All right, so right here. And I got this turned down to half throttle. You don't want to go in here all balls out. You just want enough heat to do the job on this because you don't want to be heating up a bunch of crap. And this solder wick, desolder, whatever you want to call it, it does get uh, mighty hot on you. Just beware. Yeah, this solder tip is not the correct tip for this job. I'm actually going to get on this side here now. Give a little bit of tension to try and release it. Okay, there it is. Do this other side. Boy, this is fun. There we go. Right, here's one of our 47s here. Another thing that I will say is when you buy these, they always put the lead for the positive side so it is actually longer than the negative side. So, you know, if you're on the other side, you can actually kind of tell. And our negative needs to go towards, if you remember right, needs to go towards the processor here. This is entirely the wrong tip for this. I might change up my, I think I'm gonna change up my soldering iron. This one here is an oldie. I wanna say probably from the 90s that I got this. Uh, you know, it's done its job. I've definitely got my money out of this thing. There. There, bam. All right, now, I just take these. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Just take these and kind of bend them outwards. And we'll get in here and solder those puppies down. Just kind of get it close to where the other one was. You know, same height. My eyes, just not what they used to be. This is blurry. All right, so I'm gonna get these side cutters. Snip. Snip. I have a magnifying glass over here. Let me grab it real quick. All right, guys, one down, two to go. The next one we're gonna do is right here. This one is also a 47. And I'd like to think that this will now, a little bit easier now that I got all the stuff out that I need. We're just going back and forth on the two so we don't overheat it or burn the board. Hey guys, I'm gonna give myself another shameless plug. If this helps you guys out, will you please subscribe? I'm really trying to do all this 
on my own dime and it's just you know it'd be nice to get up to where I could make a little bit to put back into the channel on YouTube all right so remember on this one that our negative goes to the outside I'm gonna give this little coaxing from the other side now it's loose Anyway, all right, so let's pull this other 47 off of here. Oh, these are really taped on. Okay. Negative to the outside, as we said. And we'll go right in. Get it all the way as close to the bottom you can and just kind of push those outwards so that it doesn't fall back down while we're soldering. Come on, quit balling up on me. This, uh, this wax is really making this a little more difficult than it needs to be. Snip, snip. All right. That'll do the trick right there. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to this one right here. And that one is right here on the board. These two here. For reference, this one is our 10 microfarad capacitor right here. All right, so I'll get in on this side here and we'll kind of help usher this thing out. All right, she's out. And once again, the negative goes towards this heat sink. Okay. Probably driving somebody nuts with my soldering. I actually was a solder jockey for about six months for a company called DOD. If you're familiar with guitar pedals, it might ring a bell for you. We made guitar pedals there, and that was right at the cusp of surround sound being a big thing. So my job was actually to build surround sound processors for little company called Fosgate. Yeah, I know, they're not that little. But a lot of ECUs, they run them through this wax stuff. And the, the purpose of that is to reduce the risk of having an issue with water intrusion. And I can actually tell you right here that this one did have some water intrusion. If you see it right there, I don't know at what point that happened. All right, boys and girls, I think we got it. And there they are from the other side. Right there, right there, and there. We can go ahead and reassemble this.
some point I will go back in and uh, I'll just throw this back in and make sure it runs. But honestly, there's absolutely no reason why that won't run. So that's the way that you replace the most commonly problematic, yeah, commonly problematic capacitors. And these will work on all the mass error. So 89 to 93, it will also work on the 88 California cars. It doesn't matter if it's an auto or a manual. It's gonna take the same cap kit. So I got three more. I got a spare. And quite honestly, you know, somebody really needs one, hit me up. And yep, yeah, we'll see if we can hook you guys up. As always, I will ask you again to like, share, and subscribe. I really hope this helps somebody out along the way. Uh, the speed density computers, I'm going to assume, are really similar. But uh, I don't have one here to look at, so I sold the one that I had for Frankie to somebody that needed it. So, And that's what uh, kind of bought some of the paint items for Frankie, was selling that. And without going on much further i will say goodbye to you guys thank you for watching another episode of the 89 garage and yeah you guys have yourselves a wonderful week